Well, uh, the Reserve Bank decided to raise the interest rate, the cash rate, by 25 basis points at their October board meeting. That was not the forecast that Westpac had. Uh, two weeks ago, we changed our forecast from 25 basis points to 50 basis points. And the main reason behind that was that we were seeing upward pressure on global interest rates. So over that period, we'd seen the, the, uh, the, the, our pricing for the, for the Federal Reserve lift by one and a quarter percent to 4.625 percent. And I felt that if global rates were going that much higher, then there will have, that'll have some impact upon Australian rates. So we lifted our, our terminal rate for Australia from 3.35 percent to 3.6 percent. And the way we included that was to say that in October, they wouldn't go by 25, they'd go by 50. And then they'd continue to do 25s in November, December and February. That seemed like a reasonable way of doing it in particular because we knew that October was going to be an uncertain month. The Reserve Bank had made it clear that once they reached neutral, they were likely to scale back the pace of their rate hikes. And we'd seen a lot of indications from them that they thought that neutral was around at least 2.5%. So the starting point of 2.35 suggested that you were still below that neutral level. So it was sensible to do one last 50, go to 2.85, well above the neutral level, and in recognition of what was happening globally and that global interest rates were much higher than I think they expected them to be at the last board meeting. But they decided not to do that, and they decided to take account of the fact that they'd moved very rapidly in May, 25 basis points, June, July, August, September, all 50s. Very, very rapid uh, rate of increase of, 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 of rates, and we haven't seen that since 19, 1994, uh, when they did 275 basis points in just three months. That's the only time we've seen anything comparable to what they've been doing. They decided to take a look, you know, uh, uh, only three, three uh, rate hikes have been actually passed on to borrowers. So wait to see how the economy evolves under such a rapid movement. That's been the thinking. And the other big factor behind the decision to only do 25 was concern about the world economy. So whereas we were thinking the world economy represented a risk to go further because global rates were higher, their concern is that the, uh, that the world economy was facing some really major headwinds at the moment and they wanted to wait to see the impact of that. But in their commentary, they do talk about further increases uh, and over the period. So we think it's very, very likely now that they will do 25 basis points in November and 25 in December. And the big question will be, uh, what will they do when they get back from, uh, from their holiday? for the February board meeting, because often uh, February is a time when the Reserve Bank takes stock and sometimes moves in a different direction on their policy. I don't think that'll be the case this time, because I think in late January, uh, they're expecting to see an inflation print of seven and three quarter percent for the year. And in the quarter, we expect that headline inflation will be as high as two and a half percent just in the quarter. Now, whilst the economy will be slowing down under the weight of these rate hikes, and of course, in particular, the housing market, I don't think that there'll be enough evidence to suggest that you, you can stop raising rates in the face of such a high level of inflation. So that's why we think that February, that's been on our agenda for a long time, will still be another rate hike. And I'm very reluctant to say that the peak in rates should be lower on the basis of that decision yesterday. Because basically that decision yesterday, in my view, just delays the high point in the, of the timing of the reaching of that rate, that high rate. So we still think that 3.6% will be the peak in March rather than in February with the final 25 basis points in March. And bear in mind that at the March board meeting, they'll have the benefit of seeing the December quarter wage price index lift. And we are really expecting to see wages growth start to gather significant momentum. The Reserve Bank is saying that our inflation is lower uh, than the rest of the world. It may well be at the moment, but if they're forecasting inflation at seven and three quarter percent by the end of the year, the US Federal Reserve is only forecasting uh, uh, PCE inflation, which is the measure they look at, 
at 5.2. Now, uh, the PCE typically runs below their headline, but it's not saying to me that uh, Australia's inflation is any lower than the inflation around the world. And I think that will be how things will evolve over the next few months. The markets, of course, have, were, were very shocked about that. And I have to say, in my recollection, this is going back many, quite a few decades of watching these reserve bank movements, I can't remember a time when the market has priced a movement in at 80% probability and it hasn't happened. So this came as a major, major shock from that perspective, not only from current pricing, but from a historical perspective as well. So of course the markets that had a terminal rate above 4% have scaled that way back to around 3.5%. So it's now back in line with our view. Um, uh, the market did go well ahead of our view. It's now come back to around about our view. Uh, the other big factor that when we changed our view on the, on, the reserve, on the Reserve Bank by lifting the cash rate, terminal rate by 25 basis points to reflect the 125 basis point increase we did for the US Federal Reserve, uh, where did that, where's the rest of the adjustment? Well, it came, of course, in the Australian dollar. So we were expecting the Australian dollar to be up at 73 cents by the end of uh, 2022. Uh, we scaled that all the way back to 65 cents on the basis that the Fed was going to go more than the Reserve Bank. So yesterday uh, there was a, a risk on mood in, the, in, the, in global markets. Uh, which meant a significant fall in the US dollar, but the Australian dollar did not rise. So that 65 cents we think is uh, really going to be pretty much near the peak for the Aussie dollar now through to the end of the year. We're not expecting to see the Aussie dollar gain real momentum until it's clear that the Federal Reserve has uh, peaked on their rates uh, and that risk can now, people can be more confident about a sustainable improvement in risk because we're certainly not expecting the US Federal Reserve will back off. They really are seeing inflation as their key target. And for Australia, I don't think we're going to deal with our inflation challenge unless the economy slows to around 1% next year. And that's why we expect that that higher rate than is generally the, the current view now of other analysts will be necessary uh, in early next year. Thank you very much.